thought it would be interesting to compare the mechanics of shaping a curved canal one millimeter long versus instrumenting the equivalent of limiting length to the constriction. The use of plastic blocks lets us see the action. Here you see me instrumenting one millimeter long. Please note the extension of the instrument one millimeter beyond the confines of the block. The initial instrument is an 08 reamer. Because it is thin and very flexible, I am using a watch winding motion that scribes an arc greater than 30 degrees. The very next instrument, the 10 reamer, is used in the reciprocating handpiece to the same one millimeter extension. Then the 15 relieve reamer is used in the reciprocating handpiece. As the reamers become thicker, there is increasing resistance to apical negotiation, but never so much that it feels like I am hitting a wall, something I would easily detect with relieved reamers if it occurred. Of course, the canal must remain well irrigated. Please note the partial recording of the curved canal in the instrument, a wonderful property of stainless steel. We now instrument one millimeter long with the 20 relieved reamer. The canal now has a glide path to safely use a tapered piezo, generally to within six millimeters of the apex. Its main purpose is to straighten the coronal curve, making the rest of the instrumentation sequence far easier. After irrigation, you can clearly see the tapered preparation in the coronal two-thirds of the canal after the use of the tapered piezo. We check our patency with the 20 relieve reamer and then proceed to the use of the 25 relieve reamer in the reciprocating handpiece. Please note at this stage how easily the 25 goes to length. The 30 relieve reamer is now used one millimeter shorter, after which we again take the 25 relieve reamer to the one millimeter extension to make sure we maintain patency. In reality, this step is most often not needed. We now go one millimeter short with the 35 and again check for patency one millimeter beyond with the 25. The 40 relieve reamer is pulled back in an additional millimeter, particularly in thin curved canals where the potential of a stiffer stainless steel instrument could increase distortions to the outer wall, again checking for patency with the 25. Finally, we take the 2506 in the reciprocating handpiece one millimeter long to complete the instrumentation. Here you see the shaping of the canal in two planes with minimal distortion. Considering the fact that a plastic block is about one-third the hardness of Denton and would distort that much easier than Denton, the lack of obvious distortion using the above technique underlines a common sense rationale for this approach.